All right, what is up, Utah fans? This is Joseph back with the Utah Utes Football Digest. And today we are talking about Utah versus the Big 12. Utah going into the 2024 football season. Today, the Big 12 put out the schedules for 2024 through 2027. So make sure you guys check it out if you haven't. We're going to put it up right on the screen here. And we're going to talk about all the matchups, guys. So not only will we see all the all the games coming up over the next few seasons, but on top of that, we're going to break down each game for 2024. That's what we're going to be focused on. Uh, for the 2024 season, we're going to take the FPI, the football power index from ESPN, and we're going to match the two teams up based on how they look this year. Obviously, next year won't be exactly like this year, but it should give us a pretty good starting point to decide or get an idea of who would win this game. So it should be a ton of fun, guys. Before we do that, please smash the like button, whether you're a fan of Utah or another team I'm talking about today. Please do smash that like button. Also, comment down below any opinions I give that you do or don't agree with. I'd love to hear your thoughts on the matchups. And also, make sure you guys subscribe to the channel. We put out a ton of Utah Utes football content. And coming into next season, it'll be a ton of Big 12 content. So make sure you guys stick around for the ride. And if you haven't already, please do share the video with someone before we dive in. And on that note, let's go ahead and get started with a game that is actually not on this schedule. Utah is playing Baylor next year as well as these other Big 10 teams or Big 12 teams. So they're actually playing 12 Big 12 games. And as we break down the games, guys, like I said, we're going to show each team, whether it's home or away for Utah, and what the FPI ranking is. And before we do, I do want to make sure everyone understands what the ESPN Power Index is. So they take the middle of the pack and they consider that an average team. And you can either be below average, which is a negative score, or you can be above average, which, which is a positive score. And the higher you are above average, the higher the positivity is and the better of a team you are. Now, um, let's dive in. Let's talk about it. The first game is Baylor at Utah. Now, Baylor is um, is a team that Utah played this year at Baylor, which means we're getting Baylor at home next year for Utah. Big, big advantage. Excuse me. But I would say here, guys, Baylor's a negative 3.7, and I don't see them getting significantly better next year. They're going to be coming to Utah, too, which, you know, outside of last week against Oregon, is one of the toughest places in the country to play. Baylor's got no shot. That's probably a 10-plus point win for Utah. So right out the gate, we've got Utah at a 1-0 against Big 12 talent. Let's go ahead and move on to the next game. The next game, we have Utah, 10.3 at UCF, a 6.5. Now, uh, UCF's not bad, right? And we're playing at their, at their turf, definitely debatable, right? But I'm, I'm going to lean when it's close like this towards Utah. And I know, obviously, I'm going to lean towards Utah. But the number one reason is Utah has had everything against it this year when it comes to injuries you've got to imagine next year the injury bug won't be hitting utah so bad and there's a decent chance we'll have cam rising and brant keithy back next year i'd say pretty confidently going at ucf this is a game that we should win okay at ucf that's uh this game right right over to the far right all right, the next game we're going to be talking about is Utah at Oklahoma State. Now, this is probably the toughest game of the entire Big 12 schedule for Utah. I would say Utah at a 10.3. Like I said, I think we'll be better with Cam and Brant Keithy. Uh, but I'd say this is if we're going to lose a game, it's probably this game. We're going at Oklahoma State. Tough place to play. Good Mike Gundy coach team. Tough team to play against at Oklahoma State. I'd say that's probably like in the middle. You could call that a win or a loss. So that's your call. Uh, next game, we got Utah at Colorado. I think Colorado will take a big step this next year. Uh, once they get all their jewelry back from UCLA, they'll take a big step heading into the next season. Um, but 
And I, I want to say Colorado's got a pretty wild home crowd. I mean, they're going to be 40, 50,000 people, you know, selling that place out. It's going to be, you know, Colorado's got a big fan base at this point, at least a big bandwagon fan base. And, and they're going to come. They're going to come. They're going to cheer on their buffs. Um, but the, the talent disparity, I think Colorado will be better, like I said, but I just don't think they're ready to hang with a team like Utah. Uh, we'll we'll find out we'll find out but uh, I don't think they're ready to hang with a team like Utah even at home with what should be a pretty decent home field advantage as they get a better defense so Utah is probably a pretty decent favorite there too okay now Utah at Arizona State uh, another team that I would expect just like Colorado to take a big step into the next year Utah at Arizona State Again, it's just, it's not enough. You're not going to have a big home field advantage against Utah. And I just, I don't see it happening. I think ASU is a better team. You know, we'll do the video breakdown for the ASU Utah game. Uh, you know, very soon we'll talk all about it. But for now, I don't, I don't think ASU even next season is ready to hang with Utah, uh, especially once Utah is healthy again. Okay, next game, we got Iowa State coming to Utah. Iowa State's a solid team, but they are not coming into Rice Eccles and beating Utah. Always a good team at Iowa State, right? Uh, Campbell, good coach, solid coach, but he is not coming into Utah. He is not beating the Utes at Rice Eccles. You know, you they're, they're a team that should put up a fight with us, but it's, it's not going to happen. Uh, so this is another game I haven't – I said Oklahoma State was the most likely game for us to lose. I'd say this is another contender with TCU coming to Utah. I would say with this one, I don't see it being as likely as Oklahoma State. Just because Oklahoma, like even though the talent-wise and the play right now is pretty close, like I mentioned earlier, I think once we get a talented, healthy team together, it's going to be another step up for Utah. On top of that, we'll be at home at Rice Eccles. Utah is nasty at Rice Eccles, guys. If you don't know, Utah is murderer's row at Rice Eccles. I know it didn't show against Oregon, but go watch any other freaking game by Utah at Rice Eccles, and we just make people look bad when they come to Rice Eccles. Uh, Oregon made us look bad at Rice Eccles, but that, that doesn't happen often. So. I don't see us losing to TCU, but I can see it being a pretty good game. All right, next, we got the team down south, BYU, coming up to Utah. Rivalry game, always wild, always intense, always a ton of fun. Uh, if you guys are Big 12 fans watching this video and you live in Utah or you live near Utah, try to find a way to this game. Seriously, this, this is what college football is all about, intense rivalry just two teams that want nothing more than to see the other team lose that night. Cause I could tell you guaranteed whether you're living in Utah County or you're living uh, on the uh, in Salt Lake, right? It, you are going to hear about it from your coworkers the next day. It is a, it, there's a ton of Utah fans and a ton of BYU fans in Utah. It really is one of the best rivalry games. That being said, Utah smashes BYU at home, not even competitive. Uh, but maybe a little competitive, but Utah smashes BYU at home. Okay, and then the final game of the year, we've got Arizona at Utah. <clears throat> Arizona's another team, looks better every game. They look like a great, uh, great opponent for Utah. Uh, High-flying offense. I just don't see it happening. I mean, with the FPI they've got this year, I don't see them being able to beat Utah. I, I could see it being a decent game, but I, I don't see them being able to beat Utah. So um, on that note, I think you guys kind of got the gist of it. I'd say when it comes to this next year, if you are a Utah fan, you should be excited. I know a lot of Big 12 fans have talked about how arrogant Utah is and how our fans don't respect the Big 12. But I mean, guys, look at what I just broke down. Utah, I mean... If I'm looking at that, I'm thinking Utah is the favorite to be the Big 12 champs next year. I'm being honest. I don't I don't see how you wouldn't see that. I mean, maybe, maybe one, maybe, maybe, maybe two losses in 2024. Like, I feel like if you're a Big 12 fan, it's optimistic to think Utah loses twice. You guys just saw the schedule. If you're not aware already, we have a huge home field advantage. 
It's what we're all about. I mean, is what it is. But it should be a ton of fun next year with Utah coming into the Big 12. Seriously, guys, smash that like button and comment below. You know, we just broke down all the matchups. What do you guys think? What What is your record prediction for Utah? I mean, just based on that, I'm thinking probably, I mean, one of our games is SUU outside of this conference, and we're playing 10, the 10 teams we just went over. I, I think it's realistic Utah could be, <laughs> I mean, at least 11-1. and one. I'm serious. I, I think it'd be surprising if we lost two games and shocking if we lost three, especially if we get Cam and Brant back. So is what it is. Comment down below. Let me know if you guys agree. And if you haven't already subscribed to the channel, we really do put out a ton of fun Utah youth football content, and we'll be putting out a ton of Big 12 content heading into this next year. So make sure you're a part of it and share the video with a Big 12 friend or some other friend that you think would find this valuable. I'm out of here and go you.